I, I always felt different being a Muslim, but it was kind of a good thing. It always gave me the confidence that I was following the right faith. I always believed that Allah was God, but growing up in high school, I wanted to have fun like I, I saw everybody else having fun. And it's like, what's fun about not smoking pot? What's fun about not drinking? What's fun about not partying? It's like what everybody does to have fun and people, it's fun. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to do that. And later on when I become a, f a parent and I'm raising children, then I'll be a good Muslim. I always had a love for music and I had a passion for music. I really, really wanted to just do something in the music business, something in the music. I just, um, I just had a love for it. The day that Eddie met me, the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to take Khalid on the road with you. I'm going to save him. And it was, it's kind of funny because it was right after 9-11 had happened and Eddie was not trying to take no Muslim into his, <laughs> into his ministry. I thought this was my big break. I thought it was my chance to be fair. I could care less about Jesus, but I wanted to learn what I could from Eddie and then just go and do my own thing. First place we went to was Nashville, Tennessee. My friend David got bitten on his hand by a bug or an insect or something and his hand starts swelling up and I was thinking maybe we need to get some type of cream or go to a doctor or something. It didn't look like it was getting any better. The mother of the house we're staying with came up to David and said, you know, I'm gonna pray for you. I wanna believe that God will heal your hand, that Jesus is gonna heal your hand. And I thought, this lady has gotta be out of her mind. Jesus healing a hand, I said, that's the stuff they do on TV. It's like, <laughs> give me a break, who believes that crap? Right in front of my face, his, the swelling goes away and the, you couldn't even tell he was, had anything wrong with his hand. I had an infection in my mouth. My wisdom teeth were growing in crooked, but I also like ha had an infection around my wisdom teeth, which is like pain on top of pain. I, like, I didn't get any sleep ever. Uh, it had been going on for like a good two weeks of just nonstop pain. So I walked up to her, I said, can you do for my mouth what I saw you do for his hand? And when she started praying for me, it was like gone. I knew it was gone. I just needed a minute to come to grips with, with, with what just happened. I remember sitting in the chair after she prayed for me. I sat down, I go, oh my God, my whole life is gonna change. Of course, everybody says, you know, are, do, do you feel any pain? Do you, are you healed? I said, I, I've been having medicine all day long. Just let me go to bed. I'll sleep on it and I'll tell you in the morning. So I ran downstairs and they had these sugar molasses cookies and I started shoving them in my mouth, you know, letting it marinate and trying to push it around in there, trying to agitate it, get, get the pain working. And there was absolutely no pain and I began to really start freaking out. I started, and I, uh, I started punching myself in the face, <laughs> trying to make some type of pain in my teeth and my face. And I realized that Jesus was God. I never knew that that God would be involved in a human life so personal that he would set them free and deliver them and, and that he would care enough to, to do that and intervene. It was a month after I got healed. We went to this conference in Alabama and it was the first time I heard the voice of the Lord and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, if you want to know if this is real, get up and see for yourself. I just lifted my hands and I closed my eyes and I just said, okay, Lord, we, just show me whatever you want to show me. And uh, they began to pray for me and my knees just turned like rubber and I just fell and hit the ground. I couldn't stand. I said, okay, Lord, for real, God, Jesus, whoever. I said, I really want to, I really want to know you. I really want you to give me all that you got. And so I just raised my hands and with nobody touching me, I just, nobody laying hands, I, I just fell over like a ton of bricks. I felt like my, I left my body and I kept going up and up like through the roof and I, f I feel like the Lord took me to, to heaven. The best way for me to describe it was that if love had a color, it's all that I saw. I have never experienced or felt a love like I had and a peace that I had felt in that moment. I just had an encounter um, with him and it didn't matter to me what he was. I knew I wanted to live for, for that God. I mean, he gave me a promise when I first gave my life to him that he was going to save my whole family. He's going to start with my sister, my mother, and then my father. So since then, my sister has come to the Lord. And a couple years after that encounter, my mother came t to Christ. And so now they're both serving the Lord and we're just uh, believing uh, the Lord to, f to fulfill what he said he was going to do and, and uh, go ahead and save my dad. <laughs> I, I'm just so happy that I found Christ and, I, and that I have a Heavenly Father who, who even, even today, I, I'm, if to be honest, I'm not good enough. 
but I have a, I have a heavenly Father who loves me even in my weakness. And, and that makes me good enough.